Atemiwaza are techniques used to attack vital points by striking, kicking, or thrusting. Since the Kime no Kata were established to master the most effective techniques for serious competition, the Kata include Atemiwaza, which are not used in Nandori. In order to be able to execute Atemiwaza with precision and speed, it is essential to understand the location of the vital points and the parts of the body with which the attacks are executed. Let's look at the vital points. Uto, between the eyes. Kasumi, temple. Suigetsu, solar plexus. Kokan no Kyusho, groin. The parts of the body used as weapons are the outside edge of the hand, as in a hand chop, the fist, the padded area beneath the little finger with the fist clenched, the elbow, the foot, the sekito or ball of the foot, and the knee. Hi, this is Shadi and Today I'm going to be discussing with you the striking techniques found in Judo and why are they there or what purpose do they serve. Now, we know that Judo is mostly a grappling art and that will always be the case, but as you saw the demonstration, the striking is very uh, different than traditional striking and also it can be very useful. For example, the hammer fist to the temple, uh, strikes to the groin, heel of the foot, on the lower abdomen, uh, grabbing the sleeves and striking with the knee, etc. So they obviously serve a different purpose than say someone who does boxing, uh, savate or French boxing, Muay Thai, etc. The purpose of the strikes in grappling arts, traditional grappling arts like Jiu Jitsu and Judo, it's a way to complement or have like a whole round up how do you say martial art it's not like mma you go to a boxing camp and then you go grapple in the afternoon separately and then you try to uh, do both in sparring striking in judo it can be either before your judo or after your judo what do i mean by that so you see here the kata someone is striking they block they strike and then proceed with like a takedown or uh, like a wrist lock or an elbow lock here you can see in the goshinjutsu no kata so or they do the takedown and then they finish off with like a, a hammer fist to the temple or to the face so it's a way of complementing your judo it is not meant to be to make you like mike tyson or uh, muhammad ali or etc all these great strikers in history or floyd mayweather so uh, for example in what the jre where uh, joe rogan had Kron gracie on he said that jude uh, jujitsu or you know judo uh, is by itself enough for self-defense or to make you a good or top quality fighter and he's he says however he trains striking but or there is striking in it but it is just mainly uh, to get to your jujitsu as he says so it's kind of like how I just mentioned it it's to make it round up or to complement it so let's say for example you do a takedown and on the streets we are not talking the cage we are not talking uh, on the mat we are talking reality so you do a takedown you land inside control let's say and then they try to squiggle or uh, try to strike back or bite you then hammer fists for example to the side of the face can be very beneficial in order to keep control and also maintain the position that you are in uh, stuff like that can really help uh, your grappling or to at least maintain it or to maintain your control another thing is that 
when we grab like the double collar kind of like when you grab the gi the double collar or like double lapel grip you see a lot of it in movies they grab the shirt with both of their hands and they pull someone into them whenever like a fight is about to go down and that is a good gra uh, grip i'm sorry for any takedown whether it is osotogari or uchigari um kind of like pulling in releasing one hand and then wrapping it around the waist and do a hip toss so this uh, grip you see in street fights is very good for judo kochigari uh, uchimata even uh, this is similar to kosei inoue's grip of underarm grip and the lapel grip and you can use it for example say you cannot destabilize your uh, aggressor with just the grip and swaying around kind of like the traditional kumikata here where you saw at the beginning a knee to the solar plexus can be very beneficial in order to get to your throw so i think you know by now what i'm trying to say is is that striking in jujitsu and judo is to facilitate your grappling and it is not a separate entity for example i don't know i don't do sambo i don't know but I know there's uh, sports sambo like grappling just like judo where you can do also takedowns and uh, double leg takedowns and leg locks and there's also uh, combat sambo which is actually like uh, MMA with the gi and like in all objective in, if I have to be objective it is the closest thing to the to the street there is because you have the striking you have the grappling and you have the gi so People who do striking and no gi grappling and then go into MMA, that's, that's very good and, and all, but you have no idea how much of danger your clothes can uh, can be uh, to you if someone grabs them and just started swaying you around or actually choking you with your tie or with your collar or all that stuff. So I think combat sambo is actually one of the best for self-defense to really understand the whole premise of the streets where someone can take hold of your clothes not necessarily hooks and underhooks only and also they can just hammer fist your face until it's nothing but pulp so striking in judo and jujitsu as i mentioned it is in a way to find your judo through it or if it's after it in order to maintain it and maintain the control you have established through your judo so and or here for, for example you have the weapons i know this is traditional kata you no one uses a sword or like the long bow unless you find like a stick on the street then maybe uh, yes then you can neutralize or at least uh gain one second of loss of focus by striking someone and then going to your joint locks in order to destabilize or at least neutralize a situation where someone is holding like a stick or a knife so here again strikes can be very beneficial like an open palm strike or hammer fists or like a back fist the uraken in karate uh, you grab the wrist that wrist is of the hand that's holding the weapon you strike with the back fist of the other hand and then you proceed to do your kansetsu waza or the joint locks in order to neutralize the situation and possibly take the weapon away from them now i know there's a lot of people that train with weapons uh and apply aikido um then the wolf man all that's all these people that work with special forces so saying that kata with weapons don't work uh is a bit of a stretch it is showing you the basis of how to disarm someone now uh is it only the way you train in order to disarm someone no obviously not uh there's no pattern in striking with a knife or there's no pattern of pointing a gun at someone but the wrist twist or the locking the elbow of the hand that's holding the weapon are the basis in order to at least try to neutralize a situation or disarm uh, someone holding a weapon so in conclusion striking is like the secondary thought to grappling in judo 
whether you want to establish a lock or after you finish or get the dominant position and you want to maintain it then you can resort to striking like a double leg takedown landing inside control and then just using the hammer fist in order to keep that someone down and not let them uh, how, how do you say comfortable in your side control and then they just start to wiggle around and try, try to weasel out of it but if they are in side control and there's hammer fist then then the fight is pretty much over uh, this is what i wanted to talk about striking mainly uh, it is uh, i know it's not gonna make you like an mma fighter if you learn the striking in how it is done in judo and the kata but uh, it is there to teach you something how to uh, complete your judo in a sense it is the striking is aimed towards the grappling you do that's how i would put it so if you have anything else to add regarding uh, the grappling the striking in jujitsu like the old koryu and also judo uh, let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening